Welcome to this demonstration of Derwent Data Analyzer version 8. This video is going to cover the emergence feature and how to do emergence calculations with Derwent World Patent Index data using DDA version 8. So to begin with, we're going to need to start by going into Derwent Innovation. We'll change our collections to include the enhanced Derwent World Patent Index data. It is important to note that you can calculate emergence scores with regular full-text patent data as long as the normal Derwent export format is used for DDA so that all the necessary fields are available. For this video, I'm going to run a search on a Derwent manual code. I'm going to run a search query on ice cream, so D03, E08, and then I need to pull down about 10 years worth of data. I'll use the publication date of the basic patent. That's the start of each patent family. With that field chosen, I'll start off on uh, January 1st, 2008. and run that through December 31st of 2017. We'll go ahead and run the search. This retrieves about 7,100 records. I'm going to export those out of Derwent Innovation and into Derwent Data Analyzer. To do this, I'll select the Derwent Data Analyzer format this produces that PDTF file and hit the Create button. So it generates the patent data text file format export file. And while it's doing that, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing and why while it's processing. The emergence calculation is based on the notion that we want to present them with the terms that are not just new to the data set, but those that are showing signs of aggressive development within the space. In other words, those that are potentially represent technologies that will succeed within the technology space of ice cream. Now, how we do that is using a concept of emergence. To see what's interesting, you can start with very simple things like a binary question. Does the term appear? Or you can sit down and treat emergence as something a bit more complicated. In Derma Data Analyzer, what we're doing is building on some research that was carried out by the U.S. government in IARPA's FUSE program. There, it was found that technical emergence could be represented by four major factors. These are novelty, persistence, community, and growth. In other words, some terminology has to present all four of these aspects if it's to be considered emergent. What we've done is operationalize those four metrics within a search result. So we're taking the search result looking at the terms, and for each terms, we're calculating whether or not it's novel, persistent, it has community, and shows growth. From that, we can calculate a score, and using that score, we can then compare a term not just within a data set, but across data sets. It also allows us to calculate values for researchers and for inventors, for organizations, and for countries as well. We need 10 years worth of data, you saw that in the query, because we're using the first three years to establish the baseline communication within the technology space. And then we're testing the last seven years. The way that this is scoped in the use case for this technology within the Derwent Data Analyzer release version 8 is looking at relatively broad technology spaces. Any area where what you're trying to do is find technologies that are beginning to, in essence, pop within that space. Let's turn back to this specific example. And so I'm going to go down and save the file. It'll download. And once it has, I'm going to go ahead and import it into Derwent Data Analyzer. So there's the file. It's zipped. I'll just double click on it. And now we'll go ahead and open up Derwent Data Analyzer and begin the import process. After that, the cleaning process will automatically run. This is the pre-treatment of the data to start the refining process. So why do we bother with this emergence idea? Again, what we're trying to do is instead of present people with a list of thousands of terms and saying, well, here's the most frequent, which generally is the most useless term. And we're not trying to present them with, here are the terms that have never appeared in this data set before the last year, as compared to all previous years. 
but we're trying to go for something a bit more subtle in the sense that it has these aspects of novelty, persistence, community, and growth. Okay, well the import process is now complete and we're going to go into the cleaning process to start the refining process. So the cleaning process is complete. We've got 7,126 DWPI records, Derwent records. So now we've got to decide what we want to run emergence on. Emergence is run on phrases or terms. There's two sources of that within a Derwent World Patent Index record. One is the title and the other is the abstract. They're both in English and cover more than 50 authorities, so it'll help give us a global perspective. If we go to the titles, we already have a natural language processing phrases calculated. For this set, there are about 25,000 of them, and they look pretty interesting, so we'll take a look at those. We could have looked at abstracts. The abstracts generally provide you more interesting results, but you may first need to use the further processing command to bring in the phrases, and then you can make the decision of whether or not you want to run it on the specialty fields, such as novelty or use. But first we'll take a look at these things to see what they look like. So our phrases have been brought in, and we'll take a quick look at them. We can see that there are some possibly junk terms, although those will wash out because of the base year analysis. There are a lot of numerics in this particular set. These might be interesting. Maybe you want to know that 0.2 to 0.4 pints is increasing, but in general, these numerics could be removed. You can do a little pre-treating before you do the calculation to remove numeric values like that. Instead, though, we're going to turn back to the title phrases and run the analysis on that. Okay, so to run the emergence calculation, we'll go to the Analyze tab of the ribbon, and we'll go to Calculate Emergence. So this will bring up a dialog box. And we're going to make some selections here, like which one is our term field. In this case, the term field is the Derwent title, and then we're going to look at the title phrases. We could do as much treatment or select multi-word phrases or do whatever you want to in terms of that phrase field. As I said, alternatively, you could take a look at the Derwent abstract, perhaps the novelty field. The algorithm doesn't care. It'll work as long as there's a phrase field and it represents the information you're looking for. For a year field, we're going to use the basic patent year. We'll have 10 years of those. That's very key. If you're working with partial data, you want to ignore the partial year. Because if we had brought in 2018, we would have had that partial year data in 2018. This would have skewed the calculations. So to avoid this, you want to make sure that you know how the data will impact the analysis. The more records there are in the partial year, the less impact there is. So as you get to the fourth quarter of 2018, perhaps we would want to include that. But on the other hand, if there's something like two or three records in a partial year, say it's January next year we're running this, then the results could be pretty peculiar. So it's a best practice to either take a look at the data itself or consider the query used to gather your data. With this set, you saw the query included the basic patent year as a term and included exactly a full 10 years of data. For the organization, we're going to use the ultimate parent. For the inventor, we use the inventor cleaned. And for region, I'll use prior to region earliest. For title, of course, that best available. So we've just run it. It's pretty quick. And the calculation is complete. Derwent Data Analyzer will present you with a list of emergent terms and their score sorted by the score. We can see that first term, ice cream machine. Interesting. Without being in the business, it's hard to say if that is a useful term, but it's interesting to me as an outsider that there's a lot of innovation happening around the machinery. Let's take a closer look with the detail window. And we can see that yes, the term does appear across this entire data set, but in the last few years, the volume of activity associated with ice cream machines has gone way up. We also have some interesting terms like health functional food and activity here has definitely kicked in the last years, really took off in 2017. Now, egg yolk has always been around ice cream, but it's becoming far more popular. Skim milk powder is taking off. <laughs> That's interesting, because that means there's diet ice cream. There's locust bean gum, walla kernel, use of raw milk, um, xanthan gum. That's being used as a, a thickener, and I can see there are several other replacements for xanthan gum in this list as well. We see lots of interesting ingredients, new ones like Chinese yam. 
and also see some terms that might be jar terms like upper end. The algorithm is designed to present some terms to the analyst, and it's up to the analyst to figure out whether or not those things are going to be useful. But it's a nice screening tool to identify which terms might be worth exploring. If you look at these terms, they have relatively modest frequencies within the data set, so it's pointing at terms that are in the lower end of the frequency spectrum, but it's saying those terms have those aspects of novelty, persistence, community, and growth. Now here's something interesting. Using natural cream <laughs> makes me wonder what they were putting in ice cream before. Here's another. Chinese yam. Now that all of a sudden took off in 2017. So here's this list of emergent terms. They all have a score associated with them. And again, these scores are useful not just within this data set, but useful across sets. So the score 15, let's take that as a comparison. It's reasonable, but not particularly high. You could have scores in the hundreds or even in the thousands if an area is really taking off substantially within a technology space. So what we can say is the rate of iteration within the ice cream industry is relatively modest in terms of the emergence of new technologies and a new terminology. These scores also show that there are, well, 53 terms which the algorithm has classified as emergent. There is a cutoff system. If you get below a certain point, uh, it won't make the grade in terms of those novelty, persistence, community, and growth aspects. So just to give you a sense of what it's picked out, in the original title phrases list, there were about 25,000 items in the list. No analyst would have time to explore each of those. Some of those items had frequencies in the hundreds. So this has definitely winnowed down the list for you. Also, in addition to the scores of various terminology, it's also showing you the titles that have the most emergent activity, right? You can use the detail window on the left to see that. So let's take a look at the title that has the most activity. There's some really neat and new and novel stuff here. There's some cool ingredients too, mango, strawberry, and so forth. It's actually got a lot of stuff in it. That all looks really interesting. I see also that skim milk powder, the health ice cream terms we saw earlier. So there's fun stuff, mango and other fruits, and maybe stuff that's a little good for you, like the low sugar health ice cream. So a lot of stuff that's emergent in the industry is related to the health aspects of ice cream. If we go back to the summary screen, we can scroll or filter to emergence to see the various scores. As we do this, we can see that we have scores not just on terminology, but scores on countries, scores on ultimate parents, and scores on titles. If we go to the inventors, we can see that we have these also sorted by score. So here's the individual inventor that has the highest score, uh, someone making a lot of the healthcare and low sugar stuff, it's interesting. Looking down the list, we can see a good selection of Chinese researchers and a few Korean ones in the list as well. You might notice that the frequencies of these individuals is quite low compared to some individuals who have farther down the list with a lower score. They may have more family members or more patent families attached to them. But what this is saying is that this, these individuals at the top based on the few records that they do have, can have a lot of the emergent ice cream, right? For example, cheese ice cream or ginkgo ice cream. So again, it's not that there's a lot of records to place high on the list, high of the score. It's that the individual has records that are neat and interesting stuff. Again, this philosophy applies across the different fields. So we can take another look at the terms, but uh, inventors as well, and turn to organizations. So we'll take a look at the ultimate parents. We can see that the most emergent organization is right up at the top, Silicon Motion. That's an interesting name for an ice cream maker. 
ZTE is better known for phones, but they're making ice cream components and ice cream machine components. Hmm. They're also making balsam pear ice cream, bamboo shoot ice cream. There's some fun stuff. Here's Huawei, an electronics company making machines in this sector. Uh, some of the terms there touch on from the titles, biscuit sandwich ice cream, biscuit layers. Ah, ice cream sandwiches, right, coming through translation, uh, probably from Chinese original filings. Oh, there's one that's instant noodle ice cream. Not something you'd pick up uh, in a grocery store in America very easily. For each emergence calculation, it will generate emergence scores on organizations, people, locations, terms, and then the records themselves. So the emergence calculation is showing the user a different cut at that vast 25,000 term list that we started with. It's trying to present terms that meet this set of criteria that suggest that, hey, there's a term that may represent a technology or an idea that the analyst should either be aware of or perhaps might be interested in looking at. It's not designed to be a replacement for the analyst's position. It's meant to be a way to suggest to the analyst some new and interesting places to look. Right, to reduce the manual work of finding the needles in the haystack, the diamonds in the rough, if you will. I hope this has been helpful. If you're interested, we have a whole series of academic articles associated with emergence, and this is the culmination of multiple years of research. We're still continuing to do development on it, though, looking at potentially reducing the 10-year time frame and possibly expanding the data sources that we can usefully cover. So thanks for taking a look at emergence. If you have any questions about it, please let us know. If you have additional questions about Derwin Data Analyzer version 8, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by email or check out our website for more information. Or contact us directly for support. You can see the numbers here for a number of places around the world. Again, thanks for your time and enjoy using the update to version 8.